you, God. Thank you, God. You know, Mama, shut your Oh, Father, we just thank you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. Thank you for your abundant love. Hallelujah. Your faithfulness unto us, oh God. No one else, oh God, can do for us what it is you do. Hallelujah. We glorify you in this place right now. Hallelujah. We lift our hearts up to you right now, God. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We lift our hands unto you, oh God. We surrender, oh God, in the name of Jesus, unto you on tonight. All, oh God, that has occurred even up to this moment. Lord, it does not matter as we enter into your presence. We begin to arrest the atmosphere. That you, oh God, might come in and have your way in this place. Minister a word of life, health, strength, hallelujah, purpose and destiny unto us on tonight. Oh God, even as we come together tonight, Lord, we lift up Gabrielle before you right now, Lord. Her and the baby, Lord, and we ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would allow your divine hand of healing to touch right now. Oh, I want to we arrest everything, oh God, that is going on in her body. Regulate the blood pressure in the name of Jesus. Let your angels, oh God, keep charge over her. In the name of Jesus, we send your word, oh God. Your anointing right now, God, to do great and mighty things in her life. In her body, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, for the baby, in the name of Jesus. Oh Hallelujah. We trust you, oh God. Yes. We know that there are doctors, but we trust in you, oh God, because we know that you're well able to do it. And oh God, as we come before you tonight, Lord, we ask that you would allow us, oh God, to bring our hearts, our minds, and our spirits into focus into this place. That whatever else may be going on, oh God, that we can come into this place and that we can bow down before you, that we can yield it over to you, and that you can have your way. Hallelujah, Jesus. That you, oh God, can shift us. Ah, lift us. And that you, oh God, might mend the broken heart. Hey, hallelujah. Heal the wounded in the name of Jesus. And oh God, as we come together tonight, let your word, oh God, be even that healing balm. Let it be that strengthener, hallelujah. Let it be that comforter that we need, oh God. Let it be that delivering power that we need in the name of Jesus. That someone might be conformed in your presence. Transformed, oh God. That someone might yield and say, I will do what the God, what God our Father called me to do. And that someone might say, I came to be saved, to be sanctified, to be Holy Ghost filled, and to call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As there is no other name. Father, we thank you for the word on tonight. We thank you for the one that is coming to give us that word. We ask, oh God, that from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, that you might strengthen her. Hallelujah. That that word, oh God, might be life-giving for us. And that it might cut through the bone, through the marrow. And that it might do what it is supposed to do for us. In the name of Jesus. That your manifest presence all in this place on tonight. Hallelujah. And be unto us, oh God, all that we need. Hallelujah. In every place, every circumstance. In the name of Jesus. We honor you, oh God, even for the set gift of this house. Hallelujah. We honor you, oh God, for his determination. We honor you, oh God, for the will, the purpose, the plan, the destiny that you have on his life. Oh God, that you and you alone shall carry it out in him. And God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will help us, God, to stand fast in the liberty wherewith you have made us free, that we won't be entangled in the yoke of bondage, but that we can be the intercessors he needs us to be. We can stand up against the wall. Hallelujah. 
We can weep in between the porches. Hallelujah. And we can say that we are here to serve and to be who it is you called us to be in this day, this hour, and in this season. Not unto us, oh God, but unto thy name we give glory. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you, oh God, might be glorified. That the works of the enemy might be nullified. And that your people might be edified. That's the reason for this prayer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We shout amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, let's go. Hallelujah. It feels good to worship God. Amen. He's done so much for us.
us your prayer tonight. Come on, open your mouth and let God fill you
that men would praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and just tell them, I came to give God praise. Look at somebody else and tell them, I came to give God the praise. Come on, I, I would put everything that's within you. Can you give God a shot of praise? Hallelujah. It's not a coincidence that the presence of God is in this very room. God is here. Okay, this is the word church. We gotta be we supposed to be taken by this is the word church. Come on, man. 
of Word Harvest International Fellowship of Churches, yeah. which we are part of, which is under the leadership of Apostle James Henry Spence. And we're just elated for her to come and break forth the word of the Lord tonight. And I'm just, and I'm telling you, she has a prophetic mantle on her life. Amen. That's, that's going to definitely shift you to the next dimension of of where God is calling you to go. Yes. And I'm just grateful um, not just to call her friend or big sister, but um, now she's my overseer. Yes. And we are part of the Central Maryland um, we're jurisdiction of Word Harvest International. Yes. Amen. I'm just so grateful for what God is doing in our events. And tonight, I want everyone to stand on their feet. Amen. As we you the floor for God to do what he's going to do tonight. And we give God praise for Overseer Alicia McCall. Can we put our hands together and let's give God praise. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, Hallelujah. God, I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Trying to get my win. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, God, I thank you. Amen. We had to transition. My podium is small. Amen. Hallelujah. So God is good. And he's greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. It's, it's such an honor to be here with my, he called me his big, big sister. I guess he's my little brother. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's so good. Amen. On what God is doing in his life for him and through him. Yes. And I, I'm just honored to be able to be um, one of the speakers that he had to um, be able to um, deliver the word of God on this afternoon. Amen. I'm, I'm going to catch up with my oxygen level in a minute. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is so good to see each and every one of you on this afternoon. 
Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to get it. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. you dancing in warfare on a life. Amen. It take a little bit out of you when you're a little out of shape. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Facebook. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But God is so good. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that you are already had a, uh, what you needed from God in the midst of this worship. Amen. Amen. If you were waiting for anything else, you missed it because God was here when we came in. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever you needed then, you should have asked him when you crossed your threshold. You don't have to wait for an altar call, but you come into the Father's house and you just ask of him and he'll give you what you need. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you didn't get it already, it's still time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's still time. Amen. 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 My scripture this, this afternoon will be coming from Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 22 through 31. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm going to ask if you get your Bibles and go with me. I'll actually be reading from the Amplified Version. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, God. St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Verses 22 through 31. I give all honor to God. To His Spirit that's present mightily in this place. Amen. To Pastor Derek Parker. Amen. And our Apostle James Lemuel Spence in his absence. But much prayers that he is here in the Spirit. Amen. I'm so glad my father, Elder Richardson, is here with us on this, this afternoon. Saving Grace and Ministries, a, a portion of them are here, and it's so good to see each and every one of you. Amen. St. Matthew, the 14th chapter, verse 22 through 31. Pray everybody had the word. Amen. Immediately he directed the disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he sent the crowds away. After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was already a long distance from land, tossed and battered by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, between 3 and 6 a.m., Jesus came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately he spoke to them saying, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter replied to him, Lord, if it is really you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the effects of the wind, he was frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus extended his hand and caught him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those in the boat worshipped him with all inspired reverence, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, for your presence yes. in this place. God, we thank you for the move that has already happened. Lord, I thank you, God, for your word to go out to your people. Lord, open up their ear gates, oh God, Lord, that we may hear what you have to say unto yes, the church. Lord. Yes. Lord, I thank you for removing me already. Lord, I thank you, God, that this word will come forward, not out of my lips, but out of your lips. I Lord, I thank you, Father God, Lord, that it will go forth to encourage God. Lord, to deliver, rebuke, rebuke, and often and even set free. Yeah. We give you all praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. In the presence of the Lord. I just want to take this few seconds um, on this afternoon to speak to you from the thought stepping out on your necks. Hey! Hallelujah. Yeah, stepping Jesus. out on your necks. Hallelujah, yeah. Jesus. We are here at Purpose City Church. 
Hallelujah. And I thank God that uh, Pastor Parker <laughs> is stepping out on his nets. Right. Hallelujah. This word is for you and me and everybody else here. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus. But I thank God as I begin to look over this passage of scripture and I looked at different things, I kind of started at the place where he urged them to come out onto the ship. But I want to back up just to the beginning. And he said he immediately, he directed the disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him. And you know, many people when they preach this, this thought or this passage of scripture, they always say, well, Jesus sent them away so that he can have some time to himself. And that's true. But why would you think that he would send the disciples ahead of him? Now, it, to me, he's sending them out on a, on a test. He wanted to see if they could go ahead of him without waiting for him to be with them to operate. Now you understand that Jesus was not going to be with them always but he had to let, give them a little push and allow them to say hey it's alright to be with me not with you. Yeah, you God will send us out on things or out on assignments and we know he's sending us but sometimes it seems like God is distant from us. It's not that he's distant. He just want to see will you be obedient yes. and walk right. forward ahead of me yes. and go and be obedient to what I've told you to do. Yes. Now the disciples didn't, they may have questioned but they didn't question him because they went on and got in the boat and went ahead of him and then Jesus stayed back to get rid of everybody else that was around to listen. Oh then he took the time to go into to the mountain to replenish his self and, be, and replenish the virtue that went out of him because he needed his father to minister to him. And you say, why, why are you giving this on Super C Sunday? Because as this ministry purpose city church go forward, Pastor Parker may have to do something else with the crowd or in the background or at this place. And he needs you to move forward and go and do what he's assigned you to do without question. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're Hallelujah. stepping out on our necks. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's stepping out on his. Are you stepping out on yours? Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. So now <laughs> they are gone out in the boat and they began to go out in the water. And as Jesus was spending time with God to get his next uh, 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 assignments on what need is next needed to be done, rest up and get ready. He he came to them. Now I, I can imagine the disciples on the boat now because I'm thinking Jesus has sent them, sent them out at the evening time. Now they don't so where is Jesus at? It's awfully late in the midnight hour. It's awfully late. He hasn't showed up. My now God. how is he going to get to us and we have now drifted out in the middle of the sea? Ah. How is Jesus going to get to me? How is he going to get to us? And he don't have another boat. We only have this one. They're thinking about all the wrong things. They're worried about what their pastor is up to. How is he going to get? Don't worry about him. God's got him. God is doing something for him for your next. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So as he moved along and they moved to another place, Jesus, he went off to restore himself. After he fed those 5,000 plus people and during his redemption time, hallelujah, adversity arose. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray y'all listening. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. The disciples went ahead of him. They didn't have Jesus there. Oh, but adversity arose. Oh, what was the adversity? The adversity was the long distance they came from the land, but now it's being tossed and battered by the waves. Yeah. There's a storm out yeah. on the ocean, <laughs> and it's moving this away. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. And see, they recognize that Jesus wasn't there with them. So what do we do in the midst of the adversity? What do you do in the midst of your adversity? Hallelujah, Jesus. Do you do what the disciples begin to do and begin to worry and say, where is Jesus at? Why isn't he here with us? Hallelujah. Don't he understand that there's a storm coming because they were fishermen. They understood that the dynamics of the waves and what's going to happen when the waves begin to be a little bit of rough, how is Jesus going to get here with us? Amen. 
So as the adversity rose, <laughs> they were still wondering where was he. But at the fourth hour, which was between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., here come Jesus coming towards them. Walking on the sea. They was wondering how he was going to get to them as they were out there in the middle of the ocean. But here comes Jesus, who he is, the son of God, strutting out on the water, walking towards them, doing something that's impossible in our sight. But Jesus was walking out because he understood that even the seas and the storm and everything around him, they was obedient to who he was. So I can imagine that the waters was even being tossed to and fro. And Jesus and who he is began to just step out and move forward because the sea understood. Here come the son of man. Here come the son of God. He is the one who created us. Let us stand at attention and be firm enough because he needs to get from point A to point B and we're going to insist him because he is who he is so Jesus begins to walk on the sea going towards the disciples and the disciples saw him walking and they were terrified they thought it was a ghost they didn't even recognize the disciples I mean, the, their Savior. They didn't even recognize the man who walked with them. They didn't even recognize the man that talked and taught them. They didn't recognize how many times we go through our trials and our tribulations, how many times we go through our storms, and we can't even see Jesus walking towards us. He doesn't have you out there all by yourself. Amen. He's coming to your rescue. Yes. But are you trusting in him and leaning out into your own understanding and acknowledge that he's on his way to you. Yes. So as he's walking out and they recognize they're scared and they cried out in fear. But Jesus look and say, hold up. Take carriage. Why are you afraid? Don't you even recognize me? Don't you even know who I am? My God. You're in the storm, but do you know me? You're not showing that you know me because you're wary and you're fretting. You're worrying. And you're afraid. And then, she, then Peter replied to him, Lord, if it's really, he had a nerve and audacity to question. <laughs> I heard, we heard your voice. We still don't recognize you. If it's you, if it's really you, won't you tell me, call me to come out there with you? If it's you, prove to me it's you. That's how we do. Lord, prove to you to me that you're God. Yes. Amen. I understand you did it for me before and you'll do it again, but this thing right here that I'm going through is a little bit too tough. Woo! And I don't understand what's going on. And I walk with you and I talk with you and I say that you're my own, but I'm I'm going through something right now and you're nowhere to be found. No but way. now you're showing up and I still don't recognize you. My God. Oh my God. If it's really you, it's command really me to come to you on the water. Like and Jesus said, come. <laughs> come on. Like come on, Peter. Come on out here and be where I'm, where I'm at. And I can see Peter say, okay, hey, if you can do it, yes, I can do, do it. it. Yeah. He was up for the challenge. Mm -hmm. mm. Peter was up for the challenge. Yeah. Are you My up God. for the challenge? Hey, are you up for the challenge? My God. Are you up for the challenge? My God. That thing that seemed impossible? Woo. Are you up for the challenge? Yeah. If Jesus can do it, this maybe I can. He still. Mm. Yeah. Hey, he ain't doing what I'm doing. Jesus. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me come on out there, God. Let me come on out there, Jesus. And as he step out. Because, because Jesus said, come, the water recognized his command. Mm. And he, the water changed the density of what it's created for. That's right. And became solid so that Peter can walk on water. And as Peter began to move forward and follow after Jesus, he was at this place as no matter what, 
Jesus, here I come. Hallelujah. I'm there. Jesus, <laughs> wherever you send me, I'm, gonna go. I'm going to yeah. go. I'm coming, Jesus. I don't care. I'm going to try something different. I'm moving forward. Yeah. I, I'm going to be there because you told me to come. Yeah. Jesus told him, and here he come. Before Peter was in his comfort zone, he was in that place. You say, what is a comfort zone? That is the place where you know what to do next. Your comfort zone could be a place where there's no challenge. See, the boat was a comfort place. The place where you could do this with your eyes closed. Yeah. Yeah. Your comfort place is that place where you won't where you won't go to God for guidance. Oh, Lord. That's your comfort zone. Did she say that? But he's in, he wants you to operate in uncharted territory. Yeah. Peter was operating yeah. now as he stepped out on the water that once couldn't hold him but is now holding him. He's walking on uncharted territory. Uncharted ter ter territory is the place where no man has has gone before. Yeah. It's that unmarked place. God has moved us in places that we've never been before. And we trust in him. But once we begin to get out there so far and the storms and the adversity come, we begin to doubt the same power that he called us out into the uncharted territory. We begin to doubt what he said to us. And we begin to look at all the distractions that's round about us. And as we looking at them, we have now taken our eyes eyes off of Jesus, the one who has commanded us to come, My and we God. have taken our eyes off him, and now we begin to sink. Jesus. He was up for the challenge. Yes. But because of those winds began to blow a little bit harder. Now he, he, he's focusing on the wind. He's focusing on now the, the water began to, to shift a little bit. He's still standing on it firm. And he began to walk out to Jesus. But because the water and the density of the winds began to make him shift a little bit and toss him here and toss him there, he began to look at everything around him and took his eyes off of Jesus. And when he took his eyes off of Jesus, his feet now began to go through the water. He didn't sink, but he started to fall through. And he said, hold up, Jesus. I thought I, 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 you called me to come but why are you allowing me to sit God, yes. Jesus said I'm not allowing you you just took your hands wow. off me yeah. and you, I, you said you was up for the challenge and I called you out into an uncharted territory yeah. but because you looked at the distractions that's round about you yeah. you begin to sink because yeah. you're now thinking about this and that yeah. and you're not thinking about what I called you to do Hallelujah. Peter never saw that before. He never experienced that before. So, but now, since his eyes is taken off of him, he, he looked out and he said, Lord, save me. I thought I could do what you do. And Jesus said, Oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? I told you to come. You was up for the challenge. You came. But you allow the distractions to have you to take your eyes off of me. My Lord. Mm -hmm. You lost focus and you begin to sink. Jesus. You must keep your focus, especially when he calls you to a new place in him. You got to keep focus because you don't know where you're going. Amen. You have no idea. No idea. You have to trust in him. Yes. And lean not into your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him. Yes. And he will direct your path. Yes. And because he was allowed, Peter was allowing him to direct his path. And he began to step out. When he took his eyes and stopped trusting, he began to sink. Yes. You got to focus on him when you accept the invitation. Yes. You have to focus on him where he is going to lead you. Yes. You have to focus on him. Hallelujah. Keeping your eyes on him at all times. Yes. 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 All times. When you take your focus off of him, mm. yes. you will begin sink to sink. It. My yes. God. Sink it. 
And then you say, Lord, why are you allowing this to happen? Yes. And he asking you, where is your faith? Where? Because yes, your sir. faith is now, your belief system in who I am, be shifted to the things that surround you. My God. When that happens, you will begin to be confused. Mm. You will begin to question and your doubt sets in. I thought I can do this. I knew I can do it. God told me I can do it. I, I, I'm following after his instruction. But these little these little tribulations, and I say little because God is mighty. These little tribulations and these things and these distractions that's coming after me or coming up in my viewpoint at this time, it, it's beginning to have doubt set in. Can I really do this? But God called you to this. God called you to your purpose. God is showing your purpose, City Church. God is showing you. And if you keep your eyes on him, you won't waver. But when you take your eyes off, there is doubt. And you begin to lose confidence in who God is. Yeah. The greatest point Jesus did was when he saw Peter sinking, he reached out to him. He reached out. He ain't let him sink. He ain't let him drown. It was a lesson for Peter. Yeah. Yeah, not only Peter, but the ones that was watching him. Mm. Amen. Because mm. you know the disciples in there said, you know, I knew he should have stayed in this boat. He shouldn't have went out there thinking he's trying to be like Jesus. No, he had enough courage <laughs> to step out on what God said and what Jesus said. And he My came God. and he moved forward. But he learned the lesson. When you take your eyes off of him, you begin to fall. You begin yeah. to yeah. fail. You begin to sink. And he didn't scold him. And he didn't fuss at him. He just asked him that one little question. Where's your faith? When did you doubt? Why did you doubt? I, 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 I was proud of you. Because you didn't fail. You, I was proud of you because you, you came. You didn't let those things that you did, the, the water, the things that you had to step out, you didn't know which way you was. You didn't know what to expect. You could have stepped out in the water and just sank right there. You didn't know what to expect, but you took the faith in who I am to yes. you, and you stepped out. You stretched out on your faith. Mm. We have to stretch out. On our faith. Yeah. We had to trust and believe in yeah. him. To lead us where he needs us. Yeah. 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 Things that God is calling us to. You know we said well somebody did that before. No it's not. Yeah. He's changing the dynamics. Yeah. Of what he's saying. Oh, yeah. 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 We're not doing Ooh. church or ministry like before. Hey, Things so are it. different now. Yes. We can't do the same shout. We can't Whoa, do the same songs. Awesome. We can't do. We got to make a, have a new song. Yes. Something that, that don't really have a rhythm. But you, when you get in his presence and begin to worship him, it will create its own its own sound. And you'll begin, and God will fall like never before. And, and people be slain on the spirit. You know, sometimes I know we like to go by protocol of the service. Huh? Hallelujah. But you know what God said? You need to go hug somebody. I'm going to go hug them. I just pray that the pastor is okay. Amen. If I need to go over and just and just pray with somebody in the midst of worship, God say, do it now. You don't have to wait till the altar call. They need this now because suppose they don't stay to the end of the service with the altar call. They will miss their breakthrough because they needed a point of contact from you and out of your disobedience. They will not receive what God has for them in the midst of the service so things Preach are changing. Preach you have to allow to move with God when yes. he said move. Yes. It's wonderful for us to have an order of service so that we can maintain order. But when God said, okay, it's time for the word, you better let everything else that come everything. that was before that was scheduled. Shut it down. Maybe do it at the end if God says so. And bring the word. If it's not yes. a time for the word, for ministry, be able to minister somebody. You need to flow with him because he wants you to move with his cloud and not yes. your own. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we have to stretch out on faith and trust him. <laughs> when stepping out on your next, what are you prepared to do for your next? What is your next? Do we even know? Are we even looking for God? I don't know what your, your next may be. Your next could be finding Christ as your Savior. Yeah. Your next could be having a closer relationship with him. Your next could be walking in your calling. Your next could be more obedient to God. Amen. Amen. Your next could be giving your time biblically. Hey. 
Did you say biblically? Yes. yes. <laughs> Your next could be committed to God in a greater financial offering. Your next could be. Just stepping out of the boat, yes. out of your comfort zone. Yes. You might didn't used to go over and shake hands with somebody yes. and hug somebody. Step out of your comfort zone. Because you know with the connection and the handshake or the embrace, yes. God can deliver somebody yes. and break the bonds of bondage. Yes. If you will just believe yes. and trust what he says, step out of your comfort zone. Yes. What is your next? God. You have to operate in your next. Yes. You might be afraid of not moving in your next. Well, I don't know how they're going to feel about me. I don't know will the pastor let me do it. Have a conversation with your pastor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yes. your pastor already know what God is about to do with you, but they're waiting for you to come to them to have a conversation. We say, well, my pastor won't let me do anything in church. It's not that. Have you availed yourself to him so that you can walk out into your next? Yeah. Or do your pastor say, can you do this? Or can you do that? No, pastor, before even a thought, Lord, align me with my pastor's spirit and vision yeah. so that he don't have to come or she don't have to come and ask me to do something. Yeah. But I'm already on it because God yeah. has released it to me to have yeah. it done. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I was talking to the young man that's coming in. This, he said, I had all the chance. I said, that's what pastors are looking for. Hey, yeah, right. now they can come in and stuff is still disarrayed. That's right. But everything is in order, yes. ready for a place of worship. Yes. Yeah. What is your next? Mm. What can you do? Mm-hmm. Say, Lord, I, I don't really understand what I need. I don't really know what my purpose is, but I'm going to build my relationship with you so that you can give me my purpose. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to get in your presence. Yes. I don't need my pastor to tell me my purpose. Hallelujah. You just need to get in a relationship with God and he will reveal your purpose to you. Hallelujah. And then that, God has already talked to your pastor and said, you know what? This is where they need to be right now. Start operating, letting them operate in this. And when they have a conversation, there will be an agreement and then the Holy Ghost will come and connect and then you'll operate with power and anointing. Hallelujah. Jesus. You got to start learning how to step out on your neck. Well, I really don't see my footing. I don't see nothing ahead of me. Just begin to walk. Amen. And as you walk, he's going to place it before you. He's not going to have you out there stepping into nothing. He's going to have you stepping into purpose. He's going to have you stepping into power. He's going to have to step, have you stepping in the anointing. He's going to have you stepping in deliverance. Because you can go over to somebody and say, I love you. And they can just break down and cry because nobody felt like nobody loved you. You didn't have to lay hands. You just had to say, I love you. And the anointing that God gave you. And it will break the chains that's holding out. And they will be set free before the altar call. God, I thank you, Jesus. But we're afraid to step into our next. Because we're unsure of the God in us. My Savior. Amen. God is still God, but you're not close enough to him. For him to really abide in you and you abide in him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because if you did, he will speak to you in a still voice. And this is what I need you to do. And you just do it. Yeah. You don't question God. Well, God, Jesus, why are you telling us to get into the boat and go to the other side? Where are you going to be? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, where are you going to be? Why are you telling us to go? He ain't say all that. He said, get in the boat and go to the other side. I'll be there in a minute. And he had to finish up some business. Our pastor used to tell us after service, you go ahead up to the restaurant and you tell them how many people. You know? And I'm like, okay. How many people? I'm like, great restaurant. Why you ask me where the restaurant? You got GPS, Google it. <laughs> Find out where it is so you can tell me and we'll be there. That's right. 
That's me. See, I don't want to talk about me. Can't talk about nobody else. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, man, I got, okay. Where, where did he say? And I'm trying to find it. But you see what I did before? Well, where's that? How did it matter? You got Google it. <laughs> don't ask me no questions. See, I'm talking to myself. So I told you, I get in trouble too. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus said, go, and I'll be, I'll be I'll there. Be there. Yeah. Pastor Parker might say, just do this. Just do it. Don't wonder <coughs> how he, what time he going to get there. Mm. He might never show up to the service. Mm. <laughs> Will you start service? He's still not here. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be on the phone calling him? Yes. Uh. Or are you, you going to be in worship? Amen. He still ain't here. Amen. Is one of the elders that should be ready to preach? My God. In other words, can you still hold on, go, go on with the service? Can you still do what you're yeah. to do? That's right. If he's not here yet. That's right. Right. <coughs> Disciples who's on the boat. Going where he said go. Mm -hmm. I know a few of them probably said, well, yeah, it's a little late. Why he ain't here, here? First of all, how you going? I know all of somebody in the midst. Somebody you know was in the midst. You know it. <laughs> but just go on. He coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we go on and have service if Pastor Parker never shows up? Mm -hmm. And the same power of the Holy Ghost smooth just like if it, what he was if he was here. That's right. My God. That's stepping out on your necks. That's right. Yeah. Because he might become the bishop mm. <laughs> and have Purpose City Church here and have Purpose City Virginia down there and he has to be there on Sunday and he can't be here on Sunday even though the service at 5 o'clock he in Virginia and God just moved like crazy at the 12 o'clock service and he couldn't get back here by 5. But can you still have prayer? Can you still do praise and worship? Can the spirit of the most high God still fall? Can somebody be delivered and set free? take off the offering hallelujah Jesus so we can pay the bills and dismiss and go home Amen. without drama Jesus. stepping in your necks Jesus <laughs> stepping on your necks out on your necks Thank you, God. that's why Jesus did his stuff he, he could have went when he said well y'all gonna help me wrap this Ooh. up so we can all go together no he was teaching them how to be independent yes. without him being present yes. my God Amen. And then are you up for the challenge? Mm, mm, mm. Whatever storm may come your way. Whatever storm. Mm -hmm. Because adversity will come. Yes, it yeah. will. Mm. Yeah. How will you handle the adversity? Mm, mm, mm. Are you going to worry? Or are you going to, all right now, God, uh, I, I need you to show me, you know, I need you to talk to me like you talk to Pastor Parker. I need you to talk to me. Uh, I, I know me and you ain't got that kind of rate, but uh, go ahead. We, we, right now, I need you to speak because we need to, you know, I, I want my pastor proud that this ministry can go forward in his yeah. absence. Yeah. Yeah. So stepping out on your necks, what have you learned in this? When Jesus or when God gives you something, don't ask a whole bunch of questions. Your pastor give you something, it's assignment, it's, it's instructions from God that's been downloaded to him because yeah. he needs help. I yeah. need help. Pastors need help. Yeah. We, we can't do it all by ourselves. We ain't getting any younger. Hallelujah. We need help. We need somebody to be able to open up service. We need somebody to be able to take up. We need somebody to be able to pray for people if we are sick in our bodies. God want to heal us, but we had to use wisdom and sit there. Can you preach the word on this morning? Can can you do that? Can you can you pray for the people that need prayer and, and, and not be in your flesh? Hey, thank you, Jesus. Can you do that? Stepping in your necks. Thank you, Jesus. Be obedient to what the assignment has given to you. Yeah. Not you trying to do somebody else's. Yeah. But doing your assignment. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. 